how's your audio? Good, man. How about yours? How about yours? Good. All right. So we got it. Let's get this thing started. Let's do it. Little things like ace. Welcome, everybody, to another Georgia Archery Podcast. Today, we have a special guest. Our guest has been in the industry for 16-plus years, and he works as a, with a rep group, MWS Associates, Inc., and he reps great products like Prime, Reinhardt, G5, Black Eagle, GPO, Spot Hog, Cuddyback, Badlands, Oh, uh, Mountain Ops. Ops, and 16 or 17 more of those great companies. We want to welcome him today, Mr. Billy Hudala. How you doing, Billy? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh. What, what's up, dude? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Sitting here just chugging down some uh, Mountain Ops at night. I'm going to be all jacked up all, on this one. All jacked up by the time this is over with. <laughs> yeah. So you must be a pretty busy man this time of year, Billy. I'm very busy. Too busy, some might say. <laughs> Well, I mean, what did we we counted it 17, 16, 17 companies you rep? Oh, it's uh, 24. Yeah, 20, 20, 25, 25. 25. Because we, we named several, and there's 17 more on top of it. I got a list mm-hmm. right here. You sent it to me. I got to take all my, uh, gotta take my Crocs off to count my toes to get yeah. most of them, too. <laughs> so, how do you stay sane, man? Stay sane? Yeah. How do you stuff you love to do? That's how you do it. Well, okay. I get it. I get asked all the time, you know. Does it not get old? I mean, do you like to hunt or shoot mm-hmm. because oh. you deal with it every day? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been doing this almost three years now, and I ain't going to day. I ain't going to work a day yet. I mean, right. I feel like I have not worked a day yet. There, there have been some rough days. There's been some long days. Yep. Mm-hmm. Some but days uh, I wouldn't have mind skipping or something. But mm-hmm. considering I get to do what I do and get a check for it. Yep. Yeah, baby. So, uh, how long you been working for uh, MWS? This is uh, October. First will technically be the first full year with MWS. I've I've represented a bunch of products alongside MWS when I was direct with G5 Prime. I got you. So I've known those guys for seven, eight years. Mm-hmm. A long time. Yeah. yeah. So how do you like it being with MWS versus being direct with Prime? Oh, I like it. There's a, you know, when I was direct at Prime, it was just me and one other guy that were on the road. So um, the camaraderie wasn't exactly there. Now I've got you know a bunch of other dudes that we all like to do the same thing, uh, traveling around. And you can also play off each other. What, yeah. what's working, yeah. what's not working. Yeah. So uh, speaking of travel, what territory do you cover? How much time we got? Well, let's go. <laughs> South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, and Alabama. That's a lot of road time. That's a, a lot, lot of, dirt. of road time. And um, he does it in a minivan. And then, and then he rocks the minivan. So he rocks the minivan. Mm-hmm. That's because it gets good gas mileage and holds all your products. Mm-hmm. Well, if we keep going, I'm going to need a semi truck. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely can't have to have enough samples, right? That's absolutely so, true. How many how many shops are, are you in in the state of Georgia alone? Uh, with Prime, there's six Prime dealers in the state of Georgia. Uh, just about every shop in the state of Georgia has some products that I represent it in some form or fashion. Maybe it's one Reinhardt Target, a couple of packs of G5 Broadheads, uh, and I appreciate every one of them. So you are literally beating the pavement. Everywhere, yeah. Wow. And how many how many shops is that, do you know? Uh depends on the day. See you you know <laughs> you're not you're, you're not the first person to say that. Um I caught when uh we talked to David. Mm-hmm. I asked him the same thing. He said, But I'll know because I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna count them and I'm gonna tell you exactly how many there are. And uh I talked to another gentleman and uh he, he said the same thing. Well it depends on the day because shops open and close and people carry products and then mm-hmm. stop carrying products. So that I understand completely, but it's one of those trick questions. Absolutely. So, you know, we was talking about your group and you was with Prime directly and you've been with some other groups that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, what makes your rep group different? Well, this group's been around a long time, going on 40, almost 41 years, I believe. Um, but every one of them likes to hunt. There's not a single guy out there that doesn't like to hunt. And and there's some reps in the industry that aren't necessarily as passionate about the outdoor industry. They're just sales guys. Yeah, yeah, some of them. I got yeah. but we, the ma- we've seen a couple of those. The yeah. vast majority of this industry is guys that are passionate about the sport. And that's what 
sustains the industry. If you if you like what you do, we just talked about it. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we like what we do. We are happier about doing it. Absolutely. So yeah. um, it doesn't seem like work. Yeah. Um. So uh, what's 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 new in the industry, man? You carrying all these new products? Is something just interesting to you, man? What's your what's your favorite product new for this year that you've seen? Oh, there's so much stuff. Oh, so what, much stuff. One of my favorite things this year has been the uh, Cuddy Link system. Cuddy Link's been out for a couple of years, but it's new to me. Yep. And uh, well, but the but the cool part is now cell, cellular is involved on the Cuddy Link where it didn't before. They had cellular before, but now it's it's gotten to the point where it's a little bit more affordable. Um, yeah, that's one but, of the things that I. But didn't the original Cuddy Link? Mm-hmm. You still had to go check one card. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, you saw it. That's go what to I'm talking about. The original home, yeah. Cuddy Link mm-hmm. didn't have the cellular involved in it. Correct. Yeah, and so now they took that piece of the puzzle and added it with the cellular. Mm-hmm. Who's just make it to bomb dot com? And, and it's mm-hmm. you know it's fairly affordable. Oh yeah, I mean well, I mean I can remember. I don't know, eight, maybe 10 years ago I, when, when trail cameras first come out where you didn't have to have 35 millimeter cam, you know, film, mm-hmm. we were paying 200 bucks for a camera that just took an SD card and thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. Right. Now for 200 bucks, you can get a camera that sends it to your phone and you don't even have to go check it. Yeah. All you gotta do is go fill the corn feeder back up. Right. Um, and it's cutty back, you know, it's quality equipment. It's not something that uh selfie selfie yes we're taking selfies right of here course. In, right here in the dungeon yep um getting technologically savvy with cellular trail cameras and selfies that's right high tech rednecks man <laughs> no, definitely high tech rednecks uh but it's it's affordable stuff with a quality name oh yeah. you know Cody we had looked always at, been top of the list we had looked at a couple of different brands when it came to cell cams that we felt like we could move yep and it kind of came down to two yep and we chose the one. And that we had moved a different one the year before. Yes. Yes. And, and that was one of the ones that we were comparing yep. and kind of looking at whether what, what we were going to do this year. And when it come down to it, um, and I'm going to give you some props here, Billy, too. <laughs> so if your boss, men's and ladies is listening to this, uh, maybe it'll maybe it'll throw you a brownie at the oh, next thanks, uh, rep meeting. But anyhow, <laughs> it came down to these two cameras, and we chose the one that – had the biggest name or or the most uh reputable reputable name been out there in the industry yeah but also the sales rep is a local guy i'm not talking to somebody in another um seven states country Mm -hmm. because the other one i mean the guy i was dealing with was not in the united states of america Mm. and um when it came down to it cutty back was the right choice for us it's an affordable camera it's quality equipment the downtime is minimal to none. Yep. None and in 2018. None in 20, no downtime in 2018. And so far in 2019. Um, you can't ask for any more than that. Yep. Affordable sale plans. Mm-hmm. And you can take 16 cameras and for like 40 bucks a month, get like 2,000 pictures a month between 16 cameras or something 40, like that. 40 is unlimited. 40 is unlimited. That's 20 right. 20 bucks is 2,000 That's pictures. right. 20 yeah. bucks a month. You can <laughs> man, get man knows his stuff. He does. Say. Well, and that's one of the things that makes him a good rep, you mm-hmm. know. There's there's some guys that really don't even oh yeah remember like the guy told me he's gonna start right yeah 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 that guy he he may still be starving he probably is that's uh, probably why I hadn't seen him no more he can't anyhow, afford gas to get here and that's one of the things that makes Billy a good rep mm. and one of the reasons why we chose Cuddy back was yep. because we know if and when we need something got a question I don't have to dial a number to another country I can dial a local number yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in Cutty Back itself, the company is good. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we know what they. I, personally, being on the other side of the counter, I like dealing with locals or people. people. I like. De- I don't like to. Well, you have to be a people person to be behind that counter. Well, yeah, there's true. no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. I personally like dealing with sales reps. There may be guys in the industry that are Botex or whatever that just prefer calling the manufacturer. Yeah, I like calling my rep. That's hey, right. dude, I need a number one cam for a CT5. Mm-hmm. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um. Speaking well, of that, I still do need a number one cam for CT5. Again, they should have been same should one. have been here today. I thought. Well, you know, we have to rely on shipping. Yeah, and like uh, just in, like anything else, sometimes it can get pushed out the door, but UPS could like decide they didn't want to pick it up, or mm-hmm. 
USPS because they are federal people. Mm-hmm. You know, they do how they want to. Yeah. Never mind. I but think anyway, there's a, there's a great hat with that right. CT or that TRM1 cam on there too. So, uh, Pretty prime. So, so what other products? We talked about the Cuddy Back. What have you seen that's just tickled your fancy there, Bill? Oh, man, there's so many. Um, Tell us about the. I get one of the mm-hmm. latest accounts that you just you, know, you guys just picked up, mm-hmm. Black Eagle. Yeah. What do you think about those? I love them. How long have you been shooting Black Eagle? I've had I've had a set of Black Eagles for five years, four or five years. I wasn't tied with that arrow company before, so it's, I've always been able to kind of shoot what I want. Yep. Uh, and I played around the carnivores quite a while ago. I had them set up for a. Uh, Big boy bow, an eighty pound draw bow. Big mm-hmm. boy. Well, you're a big boy. You are a big yeah. boy. Yeah. And with an eighty, what was you trying to kill? T Rex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you never know. Well, so, if speak, I want to shoot through a Sasquatch. tree and hit yeah. the deer, I can do that. Well, yeah. And speaking of that, I built a CT5 for David Woods. I don't know if you've gotten to meet him yet. Or yeah, I met David. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, he still needs his hat. Uh, that's what I just said. There's a gray one coming with a. All right, and that's good. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't catch that part. Oh, okay. But anyhow, we built his CT5 with mm-hmm. Black Eagle. Deep impacts. Good arrow. I think his arrow weight on that particular arrow was around 440. Mm-hmm. And at 70 pounds at 30 inches, that bow shot 308. Mm-hmm. He also had some FMJs that he had bought several months ago um, that he was playing with, some heavier arrows that come in around 502, I think. Mm-hmm. 285 foot a second. Wow. It was 70 pounds at 30 <laughs> inches. 502. With a 502 grain arrow. So he's like, dude, when we shot it through paper and it went through the target, it went in the wood behind the target. <laughs> yep. And there's not an animal on this planet that he can't kill with that bow. No. Then he decided, well, since we started with the impacts and he wanted to stay Black Eagle, he went up with the hunting version, so it's a heavier arrow. Mm-hmm. And so now... Now we, now we got wraps. wraps. We're fixing a four-fletching building, some custom... custom X yep. impacts. Mm-hmm. X impacts. So that he'll have a little more oomph behind mm-hmm. him so he can hit more trees or right. shoot through, you know, yeah. chop more trees down. Yeah. And still kill whatever he's shooting. Yep. So what else? What else? Well, what about your GPO? That's, yeah, GPO. Great company, great quality optics. Yep. Um, I like mine. Yeah, clear. I bought a pair and for the money, they're, they're as good a glass as you can ask for. That's right. I might uh, order a, a new set of 10 by 42s for myself this year. Yeah, sweet. What? Don't tell the wife. She doesn't listen to this, so no. we'll be all right. We can well, we can say that stuff here. I won't mention yeah. anything. Okay, to her. thanks. Spot hog. Yep, spot hog. Always great. You got Kent. the new release, the Kenton. Yeah, Keaton. Yeah, I got it. She's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Double pin. <clears throat> Double pin. Mm-hmm. Does it? That's been one of the most sought after sites that we got in here. That's right. So one a day, a two mm-hmm. pin fast steady. Yeah. Um. The, his buddy had one. He had to have one yep. too. Yeah. Um. Yep. So uh, I did one for a guy the other day. I put another. Uh, I can't remember. It was the. It was a uh, hog father. Hog father. Yep. Yeah. It was in that nice pretty box. You know, mm-hmm. you pop it open, get all the pieces out of mm-hmm. it. Was it a double pin or single pin? <clears throat> His was a double pin. Really? Yep. And uh, he was very happy with it. Did it have the dual indicator on that one as well? Yes, it did. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. one of the newer ones. It was a. It was a brand new one. I don't know. I, it didn't. He walked in with it. Oh. Okay, but I put. He's like, I don't know how to put this together. I said, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. so it's um, good site. Well, and one thing about the spot hogs, I mean, and, and there's a lot of good sites out there. I don't want to take anything away from, from mm-hmm. any of the other brands because sure. personally, I like the CBE Engage. I like the Black Gold uh, Vergence. I think I forget the exact name of it. As a matter of fact, I've got one. Yeah, uh, and I like the, the Fast Steady. I've well, got I mean, one of them too. You're talking about all reputable companies. There, it, yeah. I mean, that spot hog mm-hmm. is as comparable when it comes to quality is all the other ones. Yeah. Um, w- when it comes to spot hog, what site do you think you, you guys sell the most of? Uh, probably the fast study or the fast study XL. It's, it's a pretty, uh, now, what's the pretty difference split. between the fast study and the fast study XL? The XL is on a dovetail. Got you. Got Rather you. fast study's not, which is what we stock. Yeah. Um, personally, I prefer a dovetail over a bolt on, mm-hmm. um, simply because it gives you the ability to, you know, adjust that housing in or out. Right, so that you can fit it to your peak, and I like that. I like being able to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. I don't shoot a spot hog sight, but I do shoot on my tournament bow a mm-hmm. swap rest. Yeah, um, and I've shot a freaking spot hog t- t- a lizard tongue forever. Yeah, you're shooting the edge swap, right? Yeah, the edge yeah. swap now, and and I I enjoy it. I like it. Um, and uh, 
I think it's pretty cool. You got, you know, before, you know, I was a one bow guy yeah, and I can set up the one and then uh, set up the other and I could shoot paper today and 3d tomorrow and mm. all i had to do was swap it out and not have to retune yeah and that's a you know that's what i liked about that product so. oh, absolutely um yeah i mean you got tons of yeah, we could I, go we could go down this list forever i got one i'm really excited about we just started working with a dry shot mm-hmm. like uh muck boots muck boots okay kinda like muck boots kinda but a little like, bit yeah you got a little more just features little, to them okay like mm-hmm. what or can you talk about it they got um uh, the sewing's done a little bit better. The insoles are a little bit better. Um, it's the same guys who started Muck years ago, and then Honeywell bought Muck. Anyways, long story short, uh, here comes Dry Shot. So they they were actually, I don't know if you guys know how that started. They actually, uh, the guy who started was a lead engineer for Nike, actually decided to come up with his own boot line. And Nike said, or he asked Nike if he should make this boot line. He said, and, go do it. Yeah, they said, go. Leave. See ya. Have fun. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yeah, well, yeah. He, he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah, he makes I a mean, good boot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. So what got you in this industry? Uh, love of the sport. The love of the sport. So, yeah. that's, so you was a hunter first. Yep. Twelve years old. Shot my first deer in Minnesota on opening day gun season. Minnesota. Minnesota. There, yeah. Mm, I can't even. I can't even try that one. <laughs> Billy White, I have a meme of that one so quick. Go and get it. Let me get it. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, I made sure not to cut my hair any kind of funky before Billy White got a hold of a so picture. Some, <laughs> old spiky dude. Spiky dude. Yeah, I yep. saw that a little earlier. That Billy White's funny. been on it, boy. Yeah, yeah he's been. <clears throat> he's a he's a good cat. Yeah. Good guy. But uh, yeah, so I mean, you got a bunch of great products you reference stuff. And mm-hmm. like I said, it got you in the industry because you enjoyed the sport. And mm-hmm. Before we get away from the the products. Yeah. The the prime bows, you know, mm-hmm. prime for social circle ace is a, is a new bow. Right. Tell, tell us a little bit about it, how sales have been for the CT3 and the CT5 and even the CT9 this year versus some of the bows in years past. Oh, it's been insane. We had... Uh, you know, we went to split limb in 2018 with the logic and, uh, everybody, including myself was a little nope. nervous about split limbs cause you're making a change and you, a, you, yeah. you change know, is not always good. Well, not just that, but it's, you know, it, it's not broke. Why fix it or why break it? You know, right. Stay with, uh, stay with a solid limb. So anyways, the guys up there, Nate and Matt and Scott and everybody definitely went through and did their homework and, uh, it's been a huge success with Mr. Cousins in tow. Oh yeah, to have his. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know there was a couple mm-hmm. of times this year where like, earlier in the year, right, where I'd have to I ordered some CT nines, mm-hmm. and you guys were out of risers or out mm-hmm. of out of cams or whatever. Why was that? I mean, was it just demand? Demand, yeah. We we uh, beat our forecast your, by quite a bit. Your forecast That's, was not what you. So in other words, you're they're having a great year. Yes, it's a great product. Mm-hmm. Shoots good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Kenny won right right away this year at the ASA. Yep. Yeah. I know I love mine. Yeah. Um and everybody that shoots it, uh and with this whole thing that has gone down with Mr. Alligood, mm-hmm. I'm not really gonna go down that rabbit hole mm-hmm. uh <laughs> currently. We're gonna we're gonna get there. It's gonna get it's, there. It's gonna get there. And that one that that one might be a little juicy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh I'll listen in on that one. Yeah, yeah that one that one might get a little juicy. <laughs> um but there's been there's been several guys uh, that currently shoot that brand product that have since shot one or both of my nines, mm. and it looks like the uh, Prime family is going to be growing. I know a guy for uh, 2020. <laughs> you know a guy. I'm just I saying. Yeah. So I'm just saying. So to add to that tasty podcast, is going to come up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the red and black is going to lose some folks simply because of how they treated a, a certain sales rep. And y'all can take what I just said with a grain of salt, or you can realize that you made a mistake. But um, you're not talking about the Georgia Bulldogs. Either. No, I'm not talking yeah, about okay. the Georgia Bulldogs. I got you. I mean, there's, I, I know that they they felt like they made a business decision, and so be it. Um, will it affect their business in the southeast? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And the blue and black. We'll be picking up some red and black shooters. Cool. <laughs> Just watch. Well, look, I'm not going to touch that. Mm-hmm. It's a good idea. Um, mm-hmm. Just because, well. Anyway. I said it. I know. But I, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. 
But uh, call me phone number. <laughs> well, message me and I give it to you. I ain't going out on the airways with my phone. Number. <laughs> Hold on, I give it to you. Nine one one. Show but, notes. Uh, but yeah, so you've been in the industry. You 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 started out. You know, like I said, just the love of the sport, and you have an uncle that's been in this industry a long time too. Yep. And yep. uh, I guess he's decided he's not going to be in the industry. Yeah. So he's going to retire. Yeah, he retired. So, uh, you know, um, that's, you know, he and that was sort of a way in, mm-hmm. I guess, to the industry. Absolutely. Yep. Um, that was, I guess, where you cut your teeth in the industry. I wouldn't side. be here if it wasn't for him. That's yeah, right. For so, sure. Um, you know, the, that's how that works. You know, people don't always stay with the family business. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, and, and and sometimes it's hard to work with family. I mean, I just um, I've yeah, been there yeah. and done that. Um, but you know, you moved through and uh, you went from one place to the next, and still staying in the industry because you love this industry for sure. So yeah. that's awesome. Um, speaking of uh, you know, just loving the sport. Tell me about the total archery challenge. Total archery challenge. Yeah. Man. How many times have you done that? I've done. Let's see. Boyne, oh. Boyne twice, Seven Springs once, Salt Lake City once. Put uh, your shoes back on, Tennessee man. on twice. <laughs> yeah, stinky feet. <laughs> Put your shoes back on. Yeah, yeah. I've done them, done them a bunch of times. Been fortunate enough to go to some of the prettier ones too. So you enjoy that? Love them. So tell everybody. So you know, because we don't have a total archer challenge in the state of Georgia. Not in the state ten, of Georgia. Tennessee's the closest. It's close to Georgia. It's ten minutes from the Alabama yeah, line. Yeah. You're you're four hours from right here where we're standing right now to I, get there. I, and, but yeah, but people don't know about it. Right. So the, so the tell to- us tell us about it. Total archery challenge is, you know, something that uh, guys who love to hunt, love to get out in the woods, but don't necessarily like a strict tournament format. Um, and you can score it like a tournament. There's rings on it just like any other tournament. But it's just a purely fun, you know, as close as you can to hunting type scenario uh, with 3D targets. Cool. Yeah. Up and down, wood wood like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, wanted, I did the one in Salt Lake City twice in one day with uh, a guy by the name of Tony that you guys know. Mm-hmm. And, good dude. Uh, good dude, yeah. I, I did it first thing, first thing that morning where the first one's up on the mountain. Yep. You start off at 19,000 feet, you end up at, I'm sorry, you start off at 15,000 feet, you end up at 9,000 feet, and it's all straight down mm. in July, and there's still snow on the mountain in Salt Lake Oh, wow. City. Yeah, it's beautiful. But Tony shows up, and he says, hey, man, I just flew in from Atlanta. Why don't you, <laughs> uh, why don't you come do this one again with me? I said, no, 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 I don't want to. He goes, come on, man. I got nobody else to shoot with. Come shoot with me. So you went and did it again. Did it again. It was a terrible mistake. I'm still <laughs> sore. That was three years ago. <laughs> yeah. But you went to Tennessee this time, right? Yep. Did um, Tennessee this year. Yep, so. It was a lot of fun. There was 800 and some shooters this year. Last year, I think there was four. So he's wow. doubled so in he's size. So he's in size. Yeah. yeah. That's he's, awesome. Now, how much, if it continues to grow at this, but like, it was at the same place in Tennessee this year as it was last it year? It was, yeah. Can they hold many more shooters yeah i mean yeah, the, the course faci- can okay yeah, that's yeah. what i was curious the facility can't exactly hold any more sh- more people there uh but you stay in town in the town of winchester or belvedere gotcha and then uh drive in some guys went to nashville but they usually didn't come back the next day <laughs> <laughs> don't know nothing about yeah. anything yeah. like that i've, I've never been, been to a shoot been, i've yeah. been I've well been, maybe i've been to nashville a few times a time or two well there's been times we were going to go to asa's and Mm-hmm. Well, may yeah. not make the second round, or may well, wish we had not made the second round. Right? Yeah, I've been there and done that some. But uh, yeah, th- so that's what I've, you know. Me and Robbie have not done total archer challenge, and I've seen it pictures and that kind of thing. It looks so like a blast. Was, it looks like the guys have a whole lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You so. do a lot of things where you can't do in tournaments. You know, we we watched a kid a few years ago in uh, in Boyne, in Michigan. The uh, the dad would shoot from the cone. The wife would walk up. She'd shoot from, you know, X amount of distance away because she couldn't shoot, you know, those 80, 90, 100-yard shots. And then they had their little four- or five-year-old boy with his little recurve bow shooting at four or five feet, which was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then we saw a marriage propo- proposal, too, that same weekend. Well, that's Whoa. interesting. On yeah. the range? On the range. Wow. How cool is that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I want to go back to the CT3s and the okay. fives because I kind of – I'm <laughs> – Tell us about them. What makes the prime bows different from any of the other bows out there that you see on the on the market today? Well, you got parallel cam technology. What is that? For the four wheel drive of bows, it'll take you anywhere you want to go. No, it's two lobes on one cam. Uh, eliminates cam lean, 
uh, and it increases your overall accuracy. Okay. So with the new CT3 and CT5, you not only do you have center grip technology where the grip is the center of the bow, you also have that parallel cam system and split limbs. So you get a wider platform, a little bit more stable base. Um, it's the most accurate bow on the market. Uh, and you, the center grip technology, you look at a prime bow and you are the newer ones, just the mm-hmm. CT3, CT5s, right. CT9s, you'll notice that the top cam's bigger than the bottom cam. Mm-hmm. Most people don't notice until you point that out. I've had a few guys actually notice. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So why is that? Well, because it's center grip. So your your arrow is sitting an inch and a quarter above the center of the bow. Right. So there's more string that has to be let out from the bottom cam versus the top cam. By making them different sizes, they're in sync. Mm-hmm. So it all comes in. When you release the arrow, the string comes back perfectly down right. the center, horizontally right. and vertically. So, right. so you don't have horizontal knock travel. Correct. Yeah, there's a few or companies vertical that knock travel. Or ver- vertical knock travel. I understand the vertical knock travel, but you, go, you know what I'm saying is there's a lot of a lot of bow companies, like single cams, they had, you know, mm-hmm. knock travel, right. ups and downs, and, you know, we've seen it where you had to, you know. Well, you do this little test out. like you did it when you come up and set up for the, the prime night last year, mm-hmm. uh, which we still got to get on the books yeah, for this year. Yeah, we do um <clears throat> excuse me he doesn't have an open day but where you know you'd have somebody draw the bow back christmas and I'll then you would her. tap on the riser or right. push the riser and the bow would immediately come back to mm-hmm. square so to yeah. speak and i ain't gonna lie to you i was sitting there watching and i'm sitting there thinking man this is bull hockey <laughs> this is horse manure right here buddy i that mm-mm. and then i go to draw one back and he does it and i'm like blown away yeah, and how quick the, that bow come back right. to being on target. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know that I'll ever be in a tree stand or a tournament where somebody will just come out and knock my riser. No. But I guess if wind blows. It's, well, or, it's to prove a point that that bow will come back to target quicker. Quick. Yeah, when you go to draw back on an animal in seconds matter, fractions that can, of seconds really help. Yeah. I mean, I know mine, my, my nine holds and points better than any bow that I've ever put in my hand. It is ridiculous. Like the one that I'm running the V-bars on, mm-hmm. it just parks. Mm. And I keep going back to it because of the V-bar setup. So I'm going to wind up putting a V-bar setup on my red one, even though I didn't think that I was going to. I had On my red one, I had it set up with just a single offset bar, kind of like we've always run or run for the He's last few years. been playing. Mm. I've gone back and forth. And like when we shot the, the under the light 3D shoot the other night, I mean, that boat just parks. It just we was nah. exhausted, and he still didn't have no problems. I mean, I, I the amount well, the you're added shot weight, too, Robbie. With the added weight, <clears throat> if I don't, if the shot don't break within the first five to eight seconds, I start to want to fall out of the bottom. And that's partially because I'm getting weak in the back. But I mean, that first two to eight seconds, I mean, that bow just sits there. And mm-hmm. if that shot breaks within two to eight seconds, it usually hits somewhere close to where I want it to. <laughs> Well, I mean, we talk about you know primes all day, y'all prime guys. Mm. Um, well, I, I mean, you know, I, there was I some, there was a couple people, of things people, that people have asked questions, and then we have the man here to answer. Mm-hmm. So that's I understand that completely. I wanted him to hit a couple of those yeah. those finer points, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the little thing that you uh, point the laser in and count down how long. Oh, the, the there. twenty second challenge. Twenty second challenge. Yeah, I'm getting jacked up <clears> on mountain ops. So. Well, that's what you know. What that's what I, you know. You just segued it where I was going to ask because here's the deal. When he brought Mountain Ops in, everybody knows Mountain Ops. Mm-hmm. Mountain Ops has done very good with some certain people of advertising. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really have. Very well marketed. Because they've got some well-marketed and some well-known uh, people that are they're marketing their products. And we were like, why would an archery shop carry that product? And I said, why wouldn't an archery shop carry that well, product? Yeah, so <laughs> ex- explain. Do some explaining there, Billy, why we have sold and reordered products well there's a couple different reasons stuff works number one Mm -hmm. number two you guys are using it uh number three there's a product on your shelf that actually hasn't technically been launched yet don't tell i won't tell nobody it's called dialed (coughs) and it's uh, sold out twice yeah (laughs) it's uh it it works it's a energy or it's a focus um supplement that you can take that's got levi's name on it yeah it's good it's well it's going to Yeah. yeah yeah I think does does it now? I ain't seen it. Does it does? Okay. I know it works. Yeah, I know it works. We, <clears throat> excuse me, went. We were at the ATA, and they were giving out sample packs, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I got a couple sample packs while we were there. That ignite is fire. Mm-hmm. That ignite is fire. Yeah. But Pretty anyway, nice. I got the dialed and I brought them back. And um, we have an individual, a little young individual that shoots out of ace. Uh, that's done very well this year. Mm-hmm. Caleb Brown. I mean, dude has won everything S3DA state wise that you could win. Like top five in the nation. Really? Six, something like that. Wow. As an 11 year old. Yep. But that boy is wild, son. <laughs> he takes a medication. Mm-hmm. What is to that? To help him. ADHD yeah, or whatever. He's, very, he's mm-hmm. a, he very is much. the definition. Is, if you, if you of look ADHD. up ADHD, and it's got a picture of Caleb. It's Caleb. Mm-hmm. It just right. says Caleb Brown, and then everybody knows what that means. Yep. I mean, he is the MacGyver of. He is a, he is a kids. raccoon. Mm. That boy he can picks build up a, more stuff. He find like if I if I if I misplace something, all I got to do is tell Caleb to find it because he will find it. Really? So we, by 1964, he could probably find it. So <laughs> we come back from the ATA, right? And we're gonna have we've got or we are hosting our yes, S3DA, S3DA indoor regional indoor regional That's here. Right. And I t- I pulled it out of my backpack and I was like, Steve, dude, I should mix this up for Caleb and see if it works before he shoots this morning. So they get Caleb and Ken gets here. Because usually the and medicine I, hadn't got in his system. Good. And I run it by mm-hmm. Ken, which is right. his his uncle, father, figure, um, mm-hmm. provider. I'm like, dude, check this out. I got this dialed stuff. It's supposed to calm you down before tournaments. It's legal. La da 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 da. I don't know how it's going to work on an 11 year old, but we should try it. Ken's like, yeah, let's do it. So Steve gets a water bottle. We we mix it up. Within 10 minutes, Caleb comes walking in the shop and sits down in a on a stool. And usually when the boy talks, it's 100 miles an hour. You, you do good to understand what he's saying. Right. And he looks at Steve and he's like, Coach Steve, what are you doing? Or something like that to that nature. And immediately just, it was like, that's just, a totally different kid. Just, and if it'll work on him, yep. Yep. it'll work on anybody. Right. But it keeps him focused. Good. It keeps him uh, in the shop process. Squirrel, not so many squirrels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, that's his problem. A squirrel? Yeah. Where, where? Where's a squirrel? So, um, and then he can talk about anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a pretty smart fellow. Yeah, he is. And uh, the, uh, I'll tell you, we I took it, I took some, I had a girl, and we was at uh, Indoor Nationals for NFAA. And this girl was a wreck. Mm. I'm talking just because it was her first big tournament, da, 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 da. And she was bouncing off the walls. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I saw Caleb open his pack up. And I said, Caleb, can I have one pack, one of those? He's like, yeah, sure, here. So I said, took it over there, and I said, look, I'm telling you, this stuff, I told her dad. I asked, you know, said, hey, you need to, this will help her and her nerves. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, okay. And so they, she started drinking it, and it was her Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's, it was Caleb's and, Kool-Aid, and, too. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so she's like, I got to have some more Kool-Aid. <laughs> this is awesome. Cause she just, I mean, it was calmed down. She went back to her focus, went back to shooting. She shot her personal best score that day, mm. and it wow. was like, and 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 all of a sudden, the nerves had just, you know, where she was. We got parents that are years. drinking it just because of the nerves of their kids shooting. Yeah, right. parents are drinking it just to calm them down. So yeah. anyway, this product, a, whenever it launches, is going to be an awesome product. Yeah, yeah. 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 If, so, but, but if, if it's need, not launched and you need some, we've got some right so, here. Yeah, so so yeah. Social Relays has some. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's some, you, you, you have such a long line of products that you rip mm-hmm. and we could sit here and talk for hours and oh, hours and yeah. hours about all your mm-hmm. different products. I mean, mm-hmm. you got some killer badlands, killer instinct, crossbows. badlands, killer instinct crossbows. Yeah. yeah. Badlands is another one that we stock. Yep. We mm-hmm. keep that. And one of the reasons why, you know, I wanted to bring those, bring that in is the lifetime unconditional warranty. Oh yeah. Well, 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 well. You mean if I catch it on a barbed wire fence? Why are you can, jumping the fence, John? That's neither here nor there. Oh, okay. Okay. I have my tennis shoes on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, he was in the dove field. Yeah, he had a little yeah. too many birds. So not really, uh, not really. But if I catch it on a barbed wire fence, yeah, it's replaceable. Yeah, you send it back in, fix, repair, replace. Fix, repair, replace. Yep. They, they don't can't... ask why. No. Oh no, no. And it don't matter if I bought it at a yeah. yard sale. Nope. It even says that on the tag. Doesn't matter if you bought it at a yard sale. That's right. You know, and, that, and it can be ten years old. It can be as old as you want. That goes for their packs too. I know. Yeah, and they got a nice. Pack. I got. Well, I got me a pack that I carried to Texas. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude, that thing is the bomb. dot com. Right there, you go, Billy guess, White. There's your another one. Bomb. dot com. That is the bomb. dot com when it comes to hunt backpacks. So. <laughs> and you need some of them over at Governors. I agree. 
you need some of those bomb.com backpacks from Badlands. Yeah, the, there's guys that send packs in that have been, you know, they're 15 years old that have holes in them. They're burnt. Whatever the case may be. Bear, I think they've had a couple of bears that have mauled them that they've sent back in. They've replaced but They don't care. <laughs> you can't do that if you go to Walmart or, no. or Amazon. No. And, this and, is a lifetime pack. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, that's, yes, the price tag is going to show that. Mm-hmm. But, but it's, it, a point. You, it, it's, it's a, a point. one time purchase. Yeah. Well, it's not even. Uh, it's, so I a mean, guy goes, "Well, I can buy a backpack at Walmart." I said, "Yeah, when you walk out the door, then it, then you, and the zipper mm-hmm. falls off of it, you've got to go back in there and buy another one." Yep. Yeah. If you buy a new pack every year mm-hmm. because you z- blow the zippers out of a well, as, as an example of that, last year, mm-hmm. all right, Nathan, my son, was using the backpack that my father had before he passed away. That's right. And so from year to year, there was some stuff that was left in the backpack, you know, our face mask or his face mask, gloves, uh, flashlight, that kind of stuff. Yep. And it had sat there for approximately a year, not been used. So last year, we're kind of getting everything ready before the season starts, and Nate goes to open the backpack, and the zipper is blowed out. Gone. Mm-hmm. So that's like a $35, $40 backpack. Mm-hmm. Guess what? We got to buy another one. Mm-hmm. Had that been a Badlands? Billy. Mm-hmm. Backpacks jacked up. What do I do? Mm-hmm. Send it to them. Yep. They will... you, just, you go to the website, fill out a claim number, ship it back to them. They'll turn around within, I think, two weeks if it's really busy. But there's a lady in house that does all the sewing and everything right there. So that's, that's pretty legit. Pretty yeah, slick. goes back to Salt Lake. That's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Well, it, has there any? Have we missed anything that you wanted to? You think you should mention? No. Again, how much time do we have? I like the. Uh, I like the. Florida elk. Oh, the third do, size yeah, elk. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the Reinhardt target. <laughs> the Reinhardt yeah. target. We call it the Florida elk. Yep. What is it called? The uh, third size woodland elk. Woodland elk. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, we call it the Florida elk. Yeah. And I tell you what, I had a guy the other day who was looking for a target. And Robbie goes, let me show you something. That guy goes, I got to have that. Yeah, I got to yeah, have that. I got to have that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, that's – I mean, that's a, that's a neat – Little that target. target, if you put it out at 40 yards, on oh, yeah, board, it, it would smash everybody they shoots brain over it. it. Yeah. Everybody's like, man, what is that, 100 yards? Yeah. I don't know. Shoot at it. <laughs> That's how you sell more arrows, right? That's right. Click, yeah. click. I'm going to hit the range yeah, finder. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, but, and Reinhardt makes some great uh, products. Yeah, absolutely. 18 and 1. I mean, mm-hmm. guarantee. What's, what, what's, what's, what's the one year? What's the one year non to blow through? Yeah, is that 18 and 1, one year guarantee. You can shoot broadheads, field points. And if you uh, blow through it, expandables, mecha- yeah. If you blow through it, they'll send you a new one. So we're talking about warranties and things like that. Mm-hmm. Prime's got a pretty cool deer. Yeah, Prime's got a strings for life warranty. Strings, strings, and, cables. For strings and cables for life. Everybody hear that? You know how much money we make? You know how many darn strings and cables we put on bows mm-hmm. a year? Well, it's limited to every two <clears throat> years. I understand. So if you shoot through a set of strings every every year. Mm-hmm. We're only going to save you money every two years, but it'll pay for itself <laughs> if you keep that bow for 10 years. Well, yeah, for the absolutely. average bow hunter. Yeah. Who, I mean, we had a guy come in today. He goes, You think my strings need to replace? I haven't, I, you know, I've had the bow for nine years and I haven't changed strings. Like, yeah, they need replaced. Yeah, it's time. I said, time. I didn't even see the bow yet. And I can tell you yeah. that. Yeah. He's like, What do you mean? I was like, uh, Well, that's a misconception. You know, it's, there's people don't understand or realize, well, I haven't shot my bow. Didn't matter. I haven't shot my bow. Why do I need strings and cables? Because they're sitting under tension. Exactly. Right. If you, if it you, don't matter if you're shooting you that bow or not. That thing's under vehicle, a load. You park a brand new vehicle in a freaking garage and let it sit there. Mm-hmm. And you come back in four years, you're gonna have dry rotted tires. Right. And you know, but you ain't drove it. Right. But why? Because it's just. Well, you know, I mean, look at it. Think about how many bows that we pull off the shelf. That's right. That have may have been in a box two or three months, depending upon you know mm-hmm. time of order, time of getting in, time of sale. Um, and you throw it in the drawboard, and it's, and it's out of time. That's right. And it's a brand new bow out of the box, and you know good and well that when it left the factory, it, it was in time. time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens. I mean, them things are under a load. You got a seventy pound bow. I don't know what the calculation is of how much weight or what kind of load it's under. It's a lot. It's static, but it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And that material stretches. It's just the nature of the beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, yeah, if you haven't gotten your bow to your local bow shop, now's the time Take to it do in it. Now. Yep. Yeah. I think we. I think we're at still around forty. Even as many as we've that are hanging now, as even. As many that it's been picked up, that many more's come in. It happens. It's I just, mean, it's just, just a rotating it's a cycle. And it's, thing. And it's going to be that way from from the time you uh, ask, ask ask Robbie from the time you show up to work in the morning 
If you show up, if you show up an hour early, they're going to be still standing there waiting on you. I got mm-hmm. here this morning. Uh, you know, we open at eight thirty, and I usually get here between seven fifty-five and eight ten. Um, it, today was Nate's first day of school, so once he got up and was gone, I wasn't long behind him. I got here about five minutes before eight. Turn the lights on. I'm kind of piddling around, picking up some tools. I look up out the door, and there's a guy standing at the door, and it's eight o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, the the this sticker is- clearly says eight thirty on the on the window you know right. no big deal though yeah. i felt bad i couldn't let the man sit out there for 30 minutes so no. i go out there and open the door i'm like come on in buddy we don't technically open for 30 mm-hmm. minutes i'll take care of you here in just a minute but i've got to run downstairs and get me some coffee because there's no way i'm starting my day without my cup of coffee i understand that mm-hmm. another yeah, product is going to be that I, way the rest of the year another product that we're carrying now is your uh, lakewood cases yeah. Yeah. yeah um and i tell you i sold one the other day because a guy he wanted a hard case. That's mm-hmm. what he wanted. I mean, he right. wanted a hard plastic case. Mm-hmm. But he goes, but it's shaped funny, and I can't stand it up. I'm like, well, this one is perfect because it's square. Huh. He's like, what do you mean? I said, boom. I slid his bow in it. I zipped it up. I stood it up. I propped it in the corner. I said, there you go. Mm-hmm. He's like, I take it. Yeah. So um, I just like, the, you know, they, they open from the top because mm-hmm. half yeah, like time you case. flip one over, yeah. you, you pop the lip, you know, man, it's upside down. Right. You flip it back over yeah. the other way because, you you know, some people put them in different ways. I like the way it slides in, you know, got plenty of room. I like the that it's not over heavy because right. it's, you know, cloth on the outside and, you know, built with it's just sturdy. It's just all a, ABS plastic, it, and it's and it's all made in in uh, Wisconsin, very right down from Lambeau Field. That's right. Yeah, and so, they're TSA approved. Yep. They're lockable. I use them not only for uh, bows, but I stuff clothes around mm-hmm. when I'm flying with them. That's right. So Fantastic. you can take that take that double bow case. Yep. Put all your clothes in it, and then you got one bag to pick up, mm-hmm. and you roll that sucker yep. around. Yep. Check so, all my stuff in that thing. That's right. Love it. So I like the I like that product. Another, oh, yeah. No, but uh, with Spot Hog, Reinhardt, yeah. you know, Prime, Cuddy Back, we've named them all. You got, what's Bone Dog? Tell me about that. Or dog, dog Bone. Dog Bone, yeah, tell me about dog that. Dog Bone is. Uh, it's like that chap snap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I got it backwards. It's a training aid for your dog to help find sheds. Okay. See, yeah. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. See, that's something on your list that I didn't know you had. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you, mm-hmm. how big is that in Georgia, the southeast. It's you know? growing. I mean, I don't have a dog that I don't shed hunt. Right. I mean, I just don't. Dogs know. are better at it. You should get a dog. <laughs> yeah. Get a dog. So, how is that in the southeastern part of the United States? Because I see it on you know YouTube videos, guys in the Midwest, you know, shed hunting and using dogs. Is that something that you sell much of in this part of the country? Yeah. Yeah. You got to have it down here because in the southeast, as everybody knows, we got squirrels and chipmunks and mice everywhere. And as like soon as a, they love it, squirrels, possums. Yeah, you gotta you gotta pick those sheds up quick. Well, and about that time, I mean, or shortly thereafter, mm-hmm. snakes are coming out of the ground. Yeah, and, I don't shit and turkeys that. are gobbling. Yeah, that, well, I don't turkey hunt, not because I don't want to. I just never mm-hmm. really gotten into it. But um, mm-hmm. it's not it's not that fun. But if you got a place for turkeys, let me know and I'll help you. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you know how to like call that. a turkey? Me? Yeah, yeah, I've called a few. Uh, you shoot them with your bow or your shotgun? I've shot several with my bow, but I think turkeys were one of those things where. If you can shoot him in the face with a shotgun, yeah, that's what he told. To that's why I was going to go. If you didn't say it, because I had made mention earlier this year about wanting to shoot with my bow. He's like, "Dude, you want to shoot a turkey with a shotgun in the face?" And then and then go it's, do it with a bow. It's well, fun. Well, I'll tell you the, you know, guillotines and all the different mm-hmm. broadheads with mm-hmm. those big turkey. Turkey's head moves mm-hmm. a lot, mm-hmm. and it's a small target. It's very humbling, right? Yeah. So, well, if I was shooting with my bow, I'd, I dro- I'd drop the draw weight down in the mid fifties and shoot a big I, old heavy arrow. I definitely don't shoot them in the head with some kind of no turkey broadhead head target. No. I shoot them right there in the bottom half when I, you know, yeah, follow the legs up, go right, right in the center, blow it out right to the drumsticks. And then uh, the best place to shoot them is when he's fanned out and he's facing away from you, mm-hmm. right up the kawazooie. Yeah, you feel kind of bad, but they don't. <laughs> well, I worry about what <laughs> he did. When I send that dead meat through him, <laughs> he ain't going to know. Yeah. Speaking of dead meats, that's the Yo. G5 broadhead. Yeah, it is. And uh, I think everybody here is shooting that hit. Uh, yeah, Steve's Steve shooting that Yep, Steve's shooting that Steve's hit. Shooting it. You shooting them, John? Yes, I'm shooting you them. Are, I'm yeah. shooting them. Yep. You know I am. Yeah, I've right. killed five animals with them, and you couldn't pry them out of my hands. Well, I mean, I have. I did. I shot a kind of cut on Odie with one. Did you? And I tell you what. That was the bloodiest mess. It looked like a massacre come through there. And I was like, really? He didn't go from 20 yards, but, really? I mean, it was messed all the way. I mean, I, I, 
Ray Charles could have found that blood trail. Mm-hmm. It was nasty. I honestly have not had an animal, and this is God's honest truth, run more than probably 60 yards wow. with anyone that I've shot with. Including your Texas. Including Texas. Wow. Um, and when that axis deer run off, I mean, I'm sitting there looking through my binoculars, and it looks like a golf ball size hole mm-hmm. where it went in. Mm-hmm. And I watched it, you know, kind of run up a hill just a little bit, dropped its back legs, and then dropped its front legs, and just sat there and just. Yep. Night yeah. night. Cool. So there's a lot of different products you carry, a lot of different stuff, and yeah. um, I'm just glad you stopped by to tell us all about all your wonderful. Uh, things that you rep and uh so everybody can know you know the life of a rep i guess oh it's a constant so tell us uh how many how many how many miles do you put on your truck a year uh, or a minivan I minivan say. truck I, i've been renting vehicles here recently just because it's uh he's renting it's vehicles because he's like i'm gonna put in so many miles well, i don't have to wear mine out. if i put two thousand miles on in a week you know it's a little bit cheaper to rent one so um, anywhere from, you know, trade secrets I'll, here. I'll, I'll, yeah, trade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write a book later. We'll have, we'll have a special guest. Um, but anywhere from 50 to, I've put over 100,000 miles on a vehicle in a year. Easy, huh? Wow. At one point in time in my life, I covered from Miami, Florida to Wichita, Kansas as a product specialist. I was single. And no kids. You no know, kids. No mortgage payment, nothing like that. Just went off and you drove. had to. Dude, you were just you showing hunting products no. and just, just yep. working on hunting products and traveling the world. Yep. Ain't yep. nothing wrong with that. 36 days at a time, come back home for two weeks, do it again. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Life of a bachelor. Mm-hmm. That ain't the same no more. No. Now you got. Mama wouldn't be too happy. Yeah, you three kids and wife would yeah, be. That's right. Yeah. yeah they leave me. They would leave me in a heartbeat if I did that again. Yep. Well, I mean, the good part is, is you're not covering that much territory. Yeah, thank goodness. Not, not that much. Mm-hmm. You still got, you still have a lot. Yeah, it's uh, four, you know, three hours north, six hours east, eight hours west, and fourteen hours south. Yeah, because that panhandle is way down. I mean, you go all the way oh, down to yeah. the, the, the yeah. tip end. Of the got to go play in Miami for a little while. Yeah, and 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 truthfully, I mean, there is a lot of shops. There's a whole lot of empty space in Florida for sure. Like the top half, mm-hmm. and then you have to ride, mm-hmm. and you to get to all those shops on the yeah. bo- on the bottom end because mm-hmm. there's a lot of shops down on that end. Yeah, absolutely. Tampa's got a lot. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You just have to go keep go keep going. There's like, one south of Lake Okeechobee now too, and there's several in Miami. Yep, West Palm Beach. That's right. So you got to go out there mm-hmm. to the West Palm. Mm-hmm. Yep, drinking all the big stuff and hanging out with all the big folks, right? Yep. No, you. No, I turn <laughs> north as soon as I can. <laughs> He's like, I got to get it's, back up. It's the just hill. too hot. I got to get back up to heal. Yeah. The ladies in the office will call me. They'll say, where are you? Well, I'm in Florida. Oh, you suck. I don't even see the beach when I'm in Florida. Yep. Everybody thinks that. Though. Yeah. yeah. You're, just because you're in Florida, that means something, right? Yep. Well, we appreciate your time. Well, thank you. Robbie, you got anything else you want to? No, man. He pretty much mm-hmm. covered everything. Um, you got anything left you want to add that we may have missed? No, I just appreciate you guys and appreciate what you're doing for the sport of archery in the state of Georgia. And nationwide, you know. So so anybody who's listening to this and you heard something about one of the warranties or one of the products that we did talk about today, walk into your local shop and say, look, I need to see Billy Hudala in here because he's got a product <laughs> that I want. Yeah. And then they will call him. Well, don't call Billy. Just have the shop call. Yeah, have yeah, the shop call. Have the shop yeah. call. That's what I say. Well, hold on. We'll give Billy's phone number out later. Nine yeah. one one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just changed nine one one. Yeah, I just changed my number. I think yeah. <laughs> eight seven six five three zero oh, nine. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the um, you know if you heard something about one of these products that Billy you know reps with his company. Um, go tell your local shop that you heard it and wanted to see it or touch it, and they can get in touch with the right people and get him into the shop and just give him one more place he has to drive that, no, rent a that's, car to. That's fine. It, and there's a lot we didn't touch on. So oh, God, we'll do yeah. A part, we'll do part two. We got more. It, got what's two. coming down the pipe, man? You got anything that you can divulge on what may be in the works for 2020? Do you see some good stuff coming? Yes. That's new, interesting and going to blow my skirt up. Yes. Can you share it? No. I figured. <laughs> Maybe off the air. Maybe. <laughs> one, one thing we did did just pick it was Shadow Hunter blinds that I Shatter, Shadow Shadow Hunter, Hunter blinds. blinds. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. That's cool blind. So So those are things that you'll be new more things look. Bunch you of right them. semi truck. Yeah. Man, yeah. you had to have a trailer if nothing if else. Had, yeah. If you had samples for everything you 
I just tore out a safe room. We're obviously in the safe room that was in my house. Yeah. Tore that out and put shelving in it, and that's already full. And I still got stuff on the floor. Good Lord. Yeah. How do you get all that stuff? Mm. If I didn't have this job, my wife would probably leave me. She'd be like, well, you don't need another bow. <laughs> my bow tree at my house oh, is dude, full. Oh, dude, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, you, it's it's almost as bad as our wall. It looks like your wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I got two of them hanging in the tuning room that I won't let him have back. <laughs> His wife's probably glad I won't let him have yeah. them back. Yeah, she loves sample time. I bet. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Not Thank you problem. for having me. All right. Anything well, else you want to say? Uh, until next time, <laughs> I'm Big John. And I'm Robbie. And that was Billy. And we'll see you.